Well, my name is uh, David Levy. I'm a senior concert artist in the movie industry and I'm an amateur director right now. My name is Miguel Ortega. I was working in visual effects for around 10 years. So my focus was primarily modeling and texturing. Right now I'm just working on my own films. Tell me the story about Plug. So the story about Plug came up with a, a friend of mine. We were having coffee and we are talking about post-apocalypse. Instead of the usual theme where, oh, we're all being killed by robots, what if it was the opposite? What if humans were the problem on Earth and robots were here to actually save us? Well, the Green Ruby Pumpkin, we were trying to come up with something to do and we wanted to do something that was completely different. So we're like, let's do a story about girls trick-or-treating. We're working on The Nino right now, which is a 20, 25 minute period film about uh, cryptozoology. The Nino is like a mermaid. If you look at the Japanese drawings, it kind of looks like an ugly monkey. So in Japan, fishermen, they always look for the Nino because if you find it, it's an omen of war or bad luck if you catch it or if you kill it. Where do you start when you decide you want to make your own short? For me, it was when I was working at Cafe FX. I just started getting frustrated with being a gear in a machine. I was a modeler, that was it. And I just liked the fact that you can do so much more if you direct your own things. At first, it was just uh, some friends and I just wanting to have fun with a camera. That's really how it started. My brother sent me a video not too long ago, a super film actually that I shot uh, when I was a kid. It was with some toys and I was playing with it. But after that, I mean, I didn't do anything until I was 25 years old or something. I had exactly the same feeling you had and I really had that desire of telling stories. Let's talk a little bit about technology. How do you feel technology has affected making your films? I think it's affecting us on every single level, every step of the way. Rendering time is a big one, and, and allowing for fast render time has really made everything different. The type of films that we're both doing would be impossible to do even a few years ago. There's no way. There was like a sweet spot that happened when the DSLR cameras came out, 5D and 70s, where you could, as a director, you could almost do it all. You could do the shooting, you could do some of the CG. Basically, the whole process, that's when I realized, okay, I have to do something now. One of the things that I did, which was kind of crazy, is I figured if I invested the money and I bought the red, there's no way in hell I'd allow myself to slack off. <laughs> so, like, I'm gonna buy this expensive camera now, I have to do it, or else I just blew a lot of money. Can you tell me a little bit about how you, your background in visual effects and how it influences the choices you make in your short? Well, for us, what's interesting is that the concept of the short film originally was to not use CG at all. Trying to have everything on camera to try to alleviate actually a lot of the CG work that we would have to do. One of the things that I learned a lot when I was working at Tippett Studios, for example, was that they still filmed a lot of their elements. And their effects department was a very small department, but their shots looked amazing. We ended up doing that a lot on the Green Ruby Pumpkin and the Nino. Whenever we needed smoke, we would film it. If you wanted to have dust, you would film dust. Not trying to do everything in CG. But don't you think there's a little bit of an irony to the fact that both of you have a background in CG, mm -hmm. yet somehow you try to avoid it? When we realized that CG was actually more for us a tool of telling the story better, that's when we slowly started integrating a lot of the CG elements. I know that Nino, as an example, has an incredibly powerful visuals, and that's part of its narrative, right? It's like an Indiana Jones type story where the treasure is a creature. Mm -hmm. So instead of the Ark, we have the Nino. Well, when you see the first cut and those effects are not in there, you're like, wow, this really sucks. And then once you start putting in those visual effects, they make the story come together. The story should hold up on its own, but when you're making these kind of films, the effects do play a bigger role than I think we give them credit for sometimes. I think, like you said, it's whatever gets the best result. Goal-oriented. Does it tell my story better or not? So funding is an interesting thing. A lot of times you try to find your own money, you try to see how many favors you can pull in, but you still need some amount of money to get started. What did you guys do? Green Ruby Pumpkin, we financed it while I was working and my girlfriend was working at Cafe Effects. So that we financed, but the Nino, we knew we wanted to make like a 30 minute period film. It was way beyond what we could afford to do, so we did the Kickstarter route. And how did that go? It was the most stressful 30 days of our lives. Overnight, we went from like we were gonna fail, a week left, Steampunk Community picked us up. We went over 30,000. 
we have a thousand supporters. Mm -hmm. They were grateful for all of them, but there's a thousand people that want to know why the film is late. We realized that there was no way we were going to be able to finish this if we had a full-time job. So we had a plan that we're going to save enough money to survive. The Kickstarter money only went to the project, and we haven't worked for two years. We tried to get money from Kickstarter. It was at the beginning of Kickstarter, so it was a little harder to reach people and to get people to know what Kickstarter was. So we ended up failing completely, and I ended up financing it myself. Having been an artist uh, uh, for a long time, one thing that I really despise is using people for free. So uh, I made sure that I had enough money saved so I could pay people to the extent that I could pay them. It wasn't their full rate, but I really wanted to have a mark and say, okay, I'll pay you this, you know, are you fine with that? When I was right in the smack in the middle of shooting Plug, I was also working on Prometheus. And right. Prometheus was one of the most stressful projects I ever worked on. That's why it took so long. The shooting actually took uh, seven days, but overall the project took between three and four years. The biggest help came from my coworkers, you know. At the end I was so exhausted that where I had difficulty was actually the things that I do every day, which is concept art. Right. I couldn't concept anything anymore. I was so used to just render frames that I couldn't concept a room, which is exactly what I do every day. So I went back to my coworkers, and no Ben, uh, and I, I told him, help, I'm dying here. Right. Please give me direction, because right. I needed that direction to be able to finish. When I'm a concept artist, I feel on the rails, you know, and the rails are given to me by some kind of parental figure, right. whether it's an art director or, or director or anything else. And when I do projects for myself, I feel this like almost mushiness about the project, where it could go in all directions. You know, so it's about giving yourself your own rails so that you can, you can have a goal in the direction. If not, it's very easy to get lost into different areas of the movie process. Working with a partner, yeah. that's a big part of it, right? Yes, totally. So you constantly can give each other ideas. We can like critique each other's work. So when you're, when you're done with Nino, which is coming up, which is going to be very exciting, do you have any plans what you do after that? We are actually thinking about expanding the Nino. We have like 12 creatures in this film. We could do a short about how each one of those creatures was, was found. Do you think you could turn it into a series? That's our plan. So we've already been doing a lot of meetings with studios about that. Well, right now, my wife and I are finishing the, to write the pilot for our plug. We're hoping to turn it into a TV series, and we are about to pitch it to different studios. So we're looking for people to finance our dream. What would be some of the things you would tell people? It's like, all right, if you can do your short film, the number one advice I'd give you is, what would you say? If you want to direct, do it step by step. Have a goal, basically. Say, okay, in three years, I'm gonna shoot a feature. Then how do I get there? To get there, I'm gonna shoot maybe five minutes short film first, or one minute, then 10, 20, and then you grow in a more natural way, and there's not as much pain involved. Keep it simple, which is what we didn't do. Don't bite off more than you can chew to keep as many real sets as possible, as little creatures as possible. All your friends are gonna say they're gonna help you. None of them are gonna help you. Not because they don't wanna help you, but because they get home from work and they wanna live their life too. There's a weird edge with what you were saying. Don't be bad off too much. But at the same time, enough that you will fail. And because those failures are the things that are gonna make you a better director.